Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, I did a video a while back on the Ruger Blackhawk 357 Magnum being the ideal handgun for a survival situation, end of the world, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I want to kind of revise that. I don't want to say that Ruger is not what I would consider the, the ideal handgun uh, with a Blackhawk 357. I want to kind of say I found something that probably is, is, is its equal, and that's the Ruger SB-101, again, in 357 Magnum. And I'll tell you why. One, the ca the caliber. It's it's a good round. 357 is exactly what you need. Uh, you can fire a 357 Magnum, 38 Special. Same thing with the Blackhawk. It's you. It's very. It's a very dur uh, a very versatile round. Very durable. You can do a lot with it. And as when it comes to this gun, this gun is built like a tank. I mean, there's no other way to say it. You can see the thickness of the top strap. You can see where the forcing cone is. You can see where how they put the how thick the barrel is. You can see where the the way they put the cylinder latch assembly together. It's it's essentially uh, it's very well put together. It's a very tough gun. I've added the uh, Gemini Custom front sight to this, and also did a Wolf trigger spring in here. This had a trigger job that I've done, and it's a very good gun. I have a lot of respect for it. I've done a lot with this gun, and what I'll say is. Um, when you want a gun, I guess, for, would you again, what you'd call the end of the world, a handgun like this is nice because it's concealable. Even with a 4-inch barrel, which has the adjustable rear sight, and that comes with the fiber optic front sight as well, it's not going to take up a lot of room. And because despite what you see on TV in Hollywood, you're not going to want to go running around with all sorts of weapons in an arsenal, stuff like that, and just showing off because one you don't know who you're going to run into you also don't know who's going to be running things and the last thing you want to do is i mean this despite again what hollywood says if you try to take on all that you're just going to get your butt shot off it's just the way it is your best method of course is going to be to escape and evade and it's going to be you or your family and that's what you're going to be doing is escape and evade you know you're trying to survive and that you're going to want to stay away from as many people as possible because you're not going to know who you're going to run into a gun like that is not going to draw attention. You put that in a simply rugged hip holster or a nice pocket holster, no one's going to be the wiser that you even have it, which is what you want. You don't want everybody to know your business. And you don't want everybody to know what you're carrying, especially in that situation. Um, again, when it comes to a gun like this, as far as game or as far as hunting, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of it. And when you do, this gun... Okay, like where I am, 25 yards, you see a deer, is not uncommon. You put the right bullet in that gun, and at that distance, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal, it's not perfect. Will it do the job? Yes. Heavy cast bullet or, an, or a nice solid hollow point like the gold dot, you will kill the deer. Uh, small game, I've taken a small game with a Smith & Wesson Model 649, which I had before I had this. Last year I shot a squirrel at about 10 yards. It wasn't because I wanted to. It was because it was in a spot where a shot shell was just a good a good idea. It's what I had on me. And I had uh, handled my own shot shells, and they were number eights. And it, it flattened that squirrel at 10 yards, no problem. Took care of it right there on the spot. It'll do the job. It's not perfect, but again, you're going to be in a situation that's not perfect. There's going to be no gun that's going to be exactly what you want. This is going to be as close as you get. You want something that's going to work when you need it to work. This is what it's going to work. This and the Blackhawk, I think, are the two handguns that would be ideal for that type of scenario. You don't ever have to worry about them failing. A gun like this, I've not really heard of any issues with the SP-101s. I've heard some people complain that the finish is not the greatest or that the, the metal is not exactly polished as it should be. I, this one, I've had no complaints. And again, right now, this is not what I would call a politically incorrect gun. They're all technically politically incorrect to the people that want to ban them. But right now, this is not on the radar. Not yet. I think eventually you'll get to it just like everything else. But right now, you can find these. These are about $500. Again, this is a two and a quarter inch barrel. You can get a three inch barrel, or you can get the four inch barrel with the adjustable rear sight. That one would probably be the best scenario. It'd be concealable, 
you have the durability and you have an adjustable sight which you could probably stretch the range out to about 25 30 40 yards if you people who know how to shoot a handgun can get some distance out of them. this gun at 25 yards even with that front sight and with the single action you can really get some decent accuracy out of this gun i've already tried it it's not a problem to stay within say six or eight inches at 25 yards with this gun you just know how to have to know how to shoot it. Again, I've also adjusted the trigger on this. It, you know, it's not a, a huge jump, but it can be done. This is the type of gun that would work exactly for the the end of the world, whatever scenario, because it's a tough gun. It's a gun you can you can rely on. I have again, I've had a lot of respect for this gun in the time that I've owned it. It uh, it handles 357 loads, full house loads double action very well. You can get five shots downrange at seven or nine or ten yards on target very quickly. Those are the factory grips. They're the custom inserts, but they are still the factory grip. And it soaks up the recoil very, very well. And if you don't like the 357, you can get 38 specials for it. I, I always use 357 because it's the load. I, I, I'm used to it. I've shot 357 for years. And it'll work. It, it's it's one of these guns that, for the bad times, which you hope never come, and I hope they never come, this will be the gun you can rely on. This, uh, and again, I would put this right neck and neck with a Blackhawk. So, go out and get yourself one. They're still affordable. They're still very common, very easy to get. I recommend getting the one. I know a lot of people like the double action only. I prefer to still have the option of single action. That's just me. It's the way I learned to shoot. I know for concealed carry, everybody says, no, you don't need a hammer on it. it. It's never bothered me, and it's never had been an issue. So go out, get yourself one of these. It'll be the handgun, either this or the Blackhawk, that you can rely on. Also, if you've noticed this little guy here in the background, I've got a video coming up on this. This is the Ontario 20, or excuse me, 12-inch machete. They call it a camping machete. Um, I think it's probably one of the nicest tools I've seen. So there's going to be a video coming up on that as well. So go out and get yourself one of these. Get some range time in. Try out different loads. And you'll see what I mean. And if you want, like I said, replace that front sight. That uh, that Gemini Custom front sight makes a world of difference. So go out and do that. Get yourself one. And until then, have a, have a good day, YouTube. And keep shooting.